always left with the same question. Why did this happen? You don't annihilate your family and throw them away like garbage. In 2018, if you spotted them on social media, the Wattses were a happy family. What it looks like is that you found a new life, and the only way to get that new life was to get rid of the old life. I cheated on her. She accused me of it. I denied it. Finally, we have been able to recover a body that we're quite certain is Shanann Watts' body. We have strong reason to believe that we know where the bodies of the children are, and recovery efforts are in process on that. So, um, is it clear that you were not honest during the testing? I think you already know that. Um, you did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Right? You don't annihilate, you don't annihilate, you don't annihilate your, your family, family and throw them, and away, throw like them away like, like garbage. 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 I met my, my Chris, I met my husband now, and he's been the best thing, besides my children, that has ever happened to me. The Watts case is one of many examples of violence against women being turned around, blaming the victim for what happened to them. Shanann Watts has been picked apart and criticized more than any victim that I've ever heard of. Hello, my name is Meredith, and uh, since August 2018, I've wondered why Shanann, or Shannon, Watts gets a pass for being an abuser. Shannon Watts did not have lupus. Remember that, she did not have lupus. She was addicted to attention. I believe she did have Munchausen by proxy because those kids were put through the ringer with the doctor's test. This woman had no real friends. It just bothers me tremendously that this woman broadcast her abuse. I'm just saying it's pathetic that all of you people give her a pass. The woman was a lunatic. She was possibly the worst mother ever. I mean, does anyone believe those children were allergic to anything? I think the psycho man did it, but the man who was abused for eight years. I just think he was driven to murder for reasons that people aren't willing to admit. Uh, you know, the whole house was staged. I, I thought about that. Staged just like her life. Why did she keep Bella's hair so that she looked like a boy? So why isn't Bella going to public school for free? She could not control her spending. I mean, they paid 200 minimum, at least, for that 3D ultrasound. I'm guessing anal sex was part of his regular sex with Shannon, and he wanted to experience that with a woman he had feelings for. Uh, she's got those black crazy eyes, and the, the thumbnail on my video is Denise Williams, Shelly Michael, and then Shannon Watts. But notice that they have eyes dark and black, just like Charles Manson. I think it's pathetic that so many people have empathy for this woman. And if anyone knows how I can get in touch with Miss Mensa, please put it down below. wife's medical background that it was perfectly acceptable for her to be taking Bella's rectal temperature on a daily basis. Hey guys, you're going to love this video. We have a special guest today who will be calling me shortly and who has agreed to let me ask a few questions and here's the phone call. Here we go. Hello. Hi. Hey Cindy, thank you so much Hi. for calling me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.
Christopher Watt's wife had a major meltdown, came, quote, charging down the hallway toward her mother-in-law, yelling and accusing her mother-in-law of attempting to murder one of the girls. Because remember, there were children seated at the table with little cups of ice cream, killer ice cream, you know, dangerous ice cream. Next, I wanna say this. If you're a survivor of family abuse, are you protecting your children and yourself? Your husband or wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or whatever you call your significant other, do they control you? Are you afraid of them? Are you afraid of their temper? Are you afraid to speak up? Do you find yourself just going along to get along? Does your spouse control your finances? Is your spouse a liar? That the case of Christopher Watts is the landmark case for what is called the battered male syndrome. Because to me, that's an emotional response. That's an emotional answer of you saying, oh, well, it clears Shannon's name, so it must be true. Because people say there's not a lot of evidence, well, but there is enough. <laughs> so, I mean, clearly Chris confessed to everything that wasn't true. That's not possible. How is that true? Like, I on, knew. On Bella, you hear him, he's like talking about it and talking, and then he says something like, Maybe that's from when she and he stops and I'm like, oh my gosh, he was about to say it. Like, maybe that's when from when she smothered you know what I'm saying? Like did whatever. It's like he was talking about what Shanann did. And I was like, oh so what he said was true as far as what Shanann did. Many people have used the term victimology as an excuse to justify their judgments and criticism, claiming to have the right to say whatever they want because victimology says that we can study the victim. To study a victim of a crime is not to analyze in judgment based on what you perceive as faults or mistakes. Studying a victim, as in victimology, is to study the relationship between the victim and the offender. This doesn't mean it's okay to poke and prod into their marriage as if you were their marriage counselor. It means the relationship between them. Did they know each other? If so, how? Were they related? If they were married, like Shannon and Chris, what was going on in their marriage? Was there infidelity? Were there talks of separation? Victimology is a tool used by investigators mostly in serial killings. It is also used in statistics as a way to prevent others from becoming victims. It is through victimology that we now know that when a wife goes missing or is murdered, the husband is always the number one suspect. Victimology has taught us that 40% of homicides of women 
were carried out by intimate partners. It is used to help law enforcement to better serve the community and track down criminals. It should not be used by everyday citizens as a way to be nosy and dig into the victim's personal lives. It was never intended to be used as an excuse to be cruel and heartless towards victims like Shanann Watts. There's been a lot of back and forth when it comes to people expressing their opinions about Shanann Watts. It's almost like watching a boxing match where you have the people who say Shanann was a saint, an angel, a perfect person in one corner. And in the other corner, you have the people who say that Shanann was evil or at least a terrible wife and mother. The fight begins and each side throws their punches, arguing their points of how they perceive Shanann to be. They bounce from side to side in the ring the ring being social media, and take jabs at each other whenever one says something that the other one doesn't like. Some point out what they perceive to be Shanann's good traits and every inspiring word that she ever spoke. They believe that she did everything perfectly as a wife and as a mother. Some point out all of what they perceive to be Shanann's bad traits and they list everything that they think that Shanann did wrong. They believe that she had some qualities that maybe made her not the best wife and mother. This fight has went on and on for what seems like forever, almost three years to be exact. The only difference is there's no referee no one to make calls when someone crosses the line, no one to administer help to anyone who may have been injured, no one to declare who wins, and no end in sight. Everyone just continues on fighting, hurting each other and hurting the families and friends of the victims. On the one side, I really believe 99.999% of people know that Shanann was not a saint. They know she wasn't perfect. They just don't like the cruel accusations, the judgment and ridicule that they hear coming from the other side. So they are quick to speak up and stand up for her. I would like to be able to say that 99.999% of the other side doesn't believe that Shanann is really evil, but I'm not that confident in saying that. It honestly seems like some people have this deep-rooted hatred for a woman that they never even knew. Everything about Shanann has been exaggerated. When you exaggerate, you stretch the truth. And if you keep overstating and put everything under a microscope, making it 10 times bigger than it really is, you won't find the truth. You've taken some truths and mix it in with some untruths, and what you end up creating is deception. The truth is, Shanann Watts was a person no different than you or I. We all try to do the best that we can with the knowledge that we have in each passing moment. We all hope to learn and grow and change for the better. She was an imperfect woman who lived her life to the best of her ability, and there is no good reason to be constantly bashing her or pointing out what you think her flaws were. People who think highly of Shanann Watts and speak about their admiration for her, 
They aren't hurting anyone. No one will ever be hurt when sharing the positivity that they see in Shanann and maybe would like to mimic in their own lives. Everyone can make it bad and everyone can make it better. So I chose to make my life better. I chose to take all of my negative things that have happened to me in my lifetime, bottle them up and put it inside me and empower me to be the person I am and I'm becoming. Choosing to see the positive and good qualities in a person will never ever be harmful or hurt anyone. But the negativity, like what we see online, is hurtful. When you go online publicly announcing your hatred towards someone, you are in some ways encouraging others that it's okay to speak this way about someone and spread hate. When you choose to unfairly point out these small trivial flaws that you see in a person, you may be teaching this fault-finding behavior to other people. When you share your negative opinion, some will assume your opinion is factual and go and tell others, not understanding that they are spreading false information. Then rumors are started and you have convinced others that hating this person is completely acceptable. Where does all this hatred come from? I'm convinced that these people who bash Shanann Watts have this very intense hostility that comes from fear or anger that they've bottled up and held on to deep within themselves. They don't really hate Shanann. They hate the qualities that they see in her that they feel like they do not have. Jealousy goes hand in hand with hate. Being jealous of Shanann is just another jab at your already low self-esteem. Expressing how much you hate someone will only falsely inflate your ego, making you feel superior and self-righteous against the person that you hate. This is temporary and will result in even more pain. This hatred will only breed more negative emotions. It actually changes the chemicals in your brain. It causes anxiety, paranoia, and obsessive thinking. To fix the problem and improve on your mental health, it begins with you. Do some serious soul searching to find out what it is in you that causes you to project this extreme hatred onto others. What negative emotions do you have that keep you from having compassion or being empathetic towards a victim? Everyone comments and nitpicks these little words and they, they say them to you. Take it and you keep it inside. I know I did. Now, instead of picking out the good in you, pick out the bad. There's so much hate, um, so much negativity, so much negative content. We're adults here. like. Instead of bringing people down, empower people, make people better. Empower each other, like your husband, your spouse, your partner, no matter who it is, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your friend. Empower each other, like make this world a better place. Even though it's my personal opinion that most of what has been said about Shanann is because of deep-rooted hate and jealousy, there actually is a more rational reasoning for victim blaming. It's almost like a defense mechanism. It's in our nature to want to do everything that we can to prevent bad things from happening to ourselves and to our loved ones. So when we hear of a tragedy, we want to analyze everything that happened leading up to the tragic event. We want to know what led to this, what was happening in this person's life or in that moment just before their lives were taken. 
We all fear that bad things can happen to us. So we create a belief system that eases our minds and makes us feel safe. It's called the Just World Theory. The Just World Theory is the belief that people get what they deserve and deserve what they get. In this theory, it is believed that when good things happen to people, it is because they are good and deserving. When bad things happen to people, it is believed that the person's behavior is the source to blame and that they got what they deserved. This theory is what leads people to victim blame. People want to believe that if they can avoid past behaviors of the victim, that they can prevent themselves from ever becoming a victim. They want to believe that they have control over whether they become victims. Holding the victim responsible is a way for people to avoid admitting that something unthinkable could happen to them. What some may not realize is that the just world theory is an illusion. The world is not fair and just. People do not get what they deserve. And blaming the victim won't change the fact that you could become a victim yourself. We all need to know that we're amazing. We're doing amazing. Make sure we let someone know that we're thinking about them. We, um, that they're special. You know, we all need to be told that we're doing good. We have the chance to conquer whatever we choose to conquer in life. We just have to do it. We can look at the negatives and we can look at the positives. And you know what? If you choose to take those negatives in life and put them in to empower you, to make you better at what you want to be, do that. I promise you, it is so rewarding. Like you've conquered the world when you've taken something so bad in life um, and turned it into such a positive. So definitely make sure you guys go out today and tell somebody that they're amazing. Tell them that they're wonderful. Um, Tell them they're a great mom, they're a great dad, they're a great friend, whatever it is. Make sure you make someone's day today. Like, that is my, like, what I want you to do. Go make someone's day. Get off this live and go make somebody's day. (laughs) Bye, guys. Love you.